the Sisters Minor of Mary Immaculate, founded by Mother Maria Elisabetta Patrizzi, August 14, 1983. There have been allegations of abuse within the convent walls. Former members of the SMMI allege that they faced physical, emotional abuse, strict rules, food restrictions, and they have likened their experience to that of a cult. These are their stories in their words. And welcome to this week's episode of The Cult of SMMI. I am your host, Scott Mort. This week, we conclude our conversation with Mike Kovacs, detailing the efforts that he has gone through in dealing with the SMMI. Now, as always, the views and experiences expressed by our podcast guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the host or the podcast network. While we strive to provide a platform for diverse perspectives and engaging conversations, it is important to note that the experiences shared by our guests cannot be independently verified. Listeners should exercise critical thinking and consider these stories as personal anecdotes rather than established facts. There is no way to definitively refute or verify the claims made by our guests. The host and the podcast network are not responsible for any statements made by the guest during the course of the show. Listeners are encouraged to form their own judgments and seek additional information if desired. And without further ado, Mike. Not one priest cared. Not one official cared. They just don't care. So that's where all of that stands um, <clears throat> in terms of, of the story, except uh, in, uh, my mom died in 2022, well, the week after Memorial Day in 2022, and that was just an unholy mess. I mean, she was getting weaker and oxygen was kind of down, and she was down and we thought she was going to cash out on Monday, and then the next morning, you get a call from her sister. Mom's mom's lips are blue. I think she's dead. So my wife and I fly down there, and, and my mom, <coughs> the mom had either just died, was dying, or had been, you know, what, she was dead. Then came this. Then came the screw. Then came where my mind just kind of melted, and then the, I waited around for the for the funeral home to come. And of course, Teresa and Jessica are dressed like nuns. And I am just, I have no, you know, you've lost your parents. You know, the, that fun, like, time right after they die where you have no check valve? None. <laughs> you have no patience. And you will just, you will curse out the Pope and King and the, you don't care. I will say, I so, will say this as somebody <laughs> who's been there. Not only do you not have any check valve, you start looking for people to, to, blow up on and one arrived right in my lap yeah because <laughs> that's what happened so the the again she's dressed like a, a nun and so the so the the uh, the funeral home people were very nice and the, you know i had to watch all this you know putting and they were like so they asked they said well what order are you with but they asked me and i was like she's not a nice screen she's not a nun she is not, and they're looking at me like, who the hell is this guy? Like, and it, it was the same thing as always. Like, Who's the weird guy with the hat? And we're just trying to talk to a nun, but no one believed me. And I was like, I was like, you know, ter- then Teresa was like, this is, this is, now is not the time. And I'm like, yes, it is. And it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, to the end. So then Teresa, then the funeral happened and. I didn't speak to her. I didn't speak to her at the funeral. I didn't speak to her at any point. And they rewrote the will so that uh, I, 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 I didn't really contest it because I knew it was going to happen. But Teresa got the house and just about everything. I got a little bit 
it's a long, I, I didn't fight it, but it was still like a jerk move. <laughs> it was a jerk move. My other sister should have got the house. I will say that immediately. We have no problem that she got the house. But. And Teresa, as of this, as I stand here, um, you know, in this rehearsal space, she's alive and still functioning. I think, I, I know that my other sister gave her some money to live on um, at some point. I don't know if she still does. The answer might know she did. But I don't, I don't know. It's all I know <laughs> about about the whole thing so far. And and again, oh, I don't know if I said this to you before. I went to Catholics have high holy days. Like there's days that aren't a Sunday where you're supposed to go to church. So I went to the church near me for one. So this last year or two years ago. I go to it and I see Teresa and Jessica there. So that's been two years ago. And I'm like. And I'm kind of freaked out, but I'm like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not, they're not, no, this is, no, they, they're not going to win. I'm staying my ground. Much to my horror, there's readings at a Catholic Mass. There's an introduction part, then there's the reading from the Old Testament, and then a psalm, and then a gospel. And someone usually reads the, f- the first reading in the psalms. I see my sister Teresa get up and start reading, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know, you want lightning bolts to come down the earth to shake. Nope. Nope. She got up there and, and did it. And I was like, uh, life sucks. <laughs> life just sucks. But after it was over, I went to the, the priest assistant who was up there. I said, hey, look, dude, I said, just so you know, she's not really a nun anymore. There's a story about her for this and all this abuse and, uh, and the diocese knows about it. He's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. The priest, the, the priest saw a nun in the crowd and like, hey, you, hey, what am I job? Come on up and read. Mm-hmm. Because I had no idea. So I go, okay, just so you know, just so you know. And that was that. But she's still around. No one cares. No one cares at all. And that's the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I, I, I've got to ask you this. And if I'm stepping on toes, please, sure. please. One, <laughs> one of the people I talked to seemed to think there was some sort of abuse in sister Teresa's past your sister Teresa's past. yeah yeah sure and I was wondering are you privy to any of that is that something you don't well, want to no, comment th- on well no no I won't I'll be I'll be I'll be honest with you here's the thing I'm 10 years older uh, younger than her, right so I but when she was a kid like you know my you know you by the time I was four, she was already in high school. So I don't, so if something happened in that window where I wasn't around or didn't, I, I don't know. I, that, I have to honestly say, I don't know. That being said, and when I got older, I went, something's wrong. You know what I mean? Something, I just pieced it together sort of being weird, but then as time went on, I went, something must have gone down. Something must, something must have happened. I don't know what, <clears throat> I don't know. I can't ask. All my aunts and uncles are dead. One, the, the my, one of my aunts is still alive, but you kind of approach that gently. But no one, you know, I don't know who would know. That's the other thing is maybe my other sister, my other sister would know. Maybe she's the one again. We don't really. She doesn't want to talk about this. Whatever. She won't. She didn't talk to Huffington Post. She doesn't want me to. I don't even. I didn't, I didn't even tell her that this podcast has happened because she's. I don't, know anything about it. I don't want to know anything. All right. Don't know. All right. Fine. You, then I won't tell you. So I, I'm going to assume something did happen. I, but I can honestly say I have, I, I off, I can't offer anything. And it's really weird and gross that I got to look in my brain box and be like, yeah, this, and you have to admit, yeah, something must have happened. Something must have happened somewhere, but I don't know what, and mm-hmm. no one said a word. So I don't know. So that's the truth. Um, if you could go back, yeah. If you could go back mm-hmm. and talk to your sister, talk to Patrizzi, what what would you say to them from the beginning of this? Oh no, what would I? I don't think if I could go back. Okay, if I could go back, I, I know there's nothing I could have said to Teresa or Patrizzi. I the only hopeful shot would have been to, to, you know, put everything I have 
had on the line to tell my parents that that because I think my the sister was kind of locked into the cult by the time she joined. Like her brain, it was like they there's a there was a photo there is was a photo of her at my parents' house when she first got took her first vows, and I you know I passed by it like a hundred thousand times, but then a couple of years ago or whatever looked at it again and I went oh my god in heaven my sister who is normally always a like, little she was never super skinny let's put that she was never rail thin right I remember seeing the photo and I went, oh my god she's like she she looks like a broom I mean oh my god they must have really starved her and maybe it's a really you know did a number on her because I for, totally forgot about that because she gained all the weight back and then some but I would have thrown all of my weight and made it not and just been like, you can't have her do this. You cannot have her. I, whatever I could have done. I don't think I could have talked to Teresa. Patrizzi, you don't engage. Like you don't engage with the devil. You avoid, <laughs> right? Because they'll have to, but it, there's no way I could have not told, told my sister not to go. I, would, I mean, I maybe, I mean, I, I try anything at this point. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I would tell her not to go, but I, I don't see that as even being viable. Not, you know, there's never in this whole story did I ever come up with the idea of, yeah, if I could go back in time and did X or Y, this would stop? No, I, there was that never. It was this thing was like, but I do. That's why I so heard it. My mother, when she told me, when she, when she told me that she knew that that it, this, something was wrong, and then let it not only let her join, but then allowed them to stay at the house gave them money gave them like a lot of money and all this stuff over the over the decades that's my that's my biggest problem because she knew i didn't know she knew and she let it slide mm-hmm. you know what i mean she could have said look you want to become a nun that's fine but not this one do you know what i mean like right being right. not a problem I'm like, I, i've heard bad things about this Nope, didn't do it. Mm. And now we all have to pay the price. What advice so would you that. have given yourself? Oh, what would I have given myself? I would have about, I would have, oh, easy. I, that's easy. But like, you don't think you will, but I promise you, you're going to survive this. It will, that would be, that would be, I go back and look at myself or handed me a note going, you, you will survive. Just don't give up. I promise. That would be it because all this time, I didn't know. And you don't think you can survive your mother hating your gods and not wanting to talk to you and your church going against you and people not believe. You don't think you can survive, but you do. And that's the one bit of advice. That's the only advice I could really give. You know, if you've been through anything, uh, the, 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 the despair of not being believed is what can make you drown. Let yourself drown. I said this on the podcast that on Friday I said because I feel for anybody now deeply who's ever been through anything like this and but none of the survivors night in this thing can go to a support group because there is no support group we are our support group but I was you know I had one friend I wrote to every week un- unfiltered and I'm sure some of those letters were insane I in fact I'll guarantee some were insane but I was able to write unfiltered what was going on. And a lot of people left because of that. Because I was in this, when you're in the middle of, when I was in the middle of all this before the letter and before meeting survivors and no one believing me, that was probably the worst point in my life because there was no hope and you were, I always felt alone. But just so I, I, I'm a letter writer, that's what I did. So I, I was going through this insanity, and I was writing stuff to some dear friends, and a bunch of people just dropped me. Never wrote me again. Never talked to me again. Nothing again. They're like, "You're, you're too much. You're, you're that hurt like so bad." Mm. But one person um, stuck around, and I owe them so much because you can only. When you're alone with your thoughts is, is what you need to transcribe. So I tell people, try to find a therapist, try to find somebody to talk to if you can. If you can't do that, then just write it out. Re- type it out. Go. Just get, get, you know, get word. 
you know, just get Google Docs. Just start typing, get it, transcribe your emotions, transcribe your, get it out of your system, and it will help you get to the next, through the night into the next morning. So that is my, my hope, my prayer, is that anybody who hears this who's going through something bad, know you can get through it. Even if your family is against you, even if the world doesn't believe you, you if you if you are centered with the truth, you you will make it, and it will be a glorious resurrection. But it, you got to go through the hell first. But it's not hopeless. That's my fervent prayer thoughts for anybody and everybody out there. Um, well, this you can probably throw this into something okay. before. <clears throat> that's a good closer, but I meant to say something earlier is um, I've listened to the podcast. I've noticed that I've, I've even had a hard time sort of following what some of the women were saying. The idea with the order, and it's said again, this is set up like any other normal order, any other normal thing. And it's basically because the organization is a hierarchy. It's like anything else from 7-Eleven all the way to the Vatican, there's a hierarchy, there's a chain of command, there's the whole nine. So I was having an art done following what some of these women were saying about like mother general and mother this and mother that. And basically, I think you, I was hoping, to, I, maybe I'll type this out for you, you can read it, but I'll ask Georgiana, but basically the SMMI was set up in a kind of a weird way because you had the woman who founded it, it was Patricia right so she's she had she's the founder of it but she really should not have been allowed to be totally in charge she needed a second in command to really run it because she was the starter of it so she had overview of it and was kind of get but so there was like her mother general and then every every convent had someone in charge okay and then, so that, I forgot what the name was. So if you go from low to high, it's like you basically your plea, your, your, your grunts, your regular nuns. And then you had someone who's in charge of them. That's probably Mother Superior. That was that one. Then Mother General was above Mother Superior, who was in charge of a group of them, maybe in a country or county or something like that. And then there was the people in Rome who were in charge of the larger groups and so on. So those are the names. And because I was like, I, I, I'm not following this. Hold on. Wait, let, me go, let me go Google this. So it was a little confusing because they were just using the terms they knew uh i don't know if i just want you know anything else is there any uh, god bless you scott oh, you god bless you man well I'm, you know you gave me uh, thank you but you gave everybody a voice i'm just you know what i mean and that's i'm just a guy with a with a youtube channel and a few people listening to it well uh, yeah but uh and pr said no <laughs> right i mean people say no the NPR still says no. I think I sent a pitch out recently. They still say no. But I'm saying, but look, you are you and I are, are real close. We're like brothers. And on Friday when I was on that YouTube channel getting interviewed, these two lovely women were like, Oh my God, we're so you were so brave, we're so proud of you that you you stood up and did this. And I'm like, there was no option. Yeah. There was no there's no plan B. There there's no there was never a moment where I went, Well, I could just keep this I could have no one say anything about this and have all the no there was never a B option because if there if you know this truth if you know something this bad happened and people need to be helped forget it it's like you got to go do it and it's much better to suffer you know and and but stand for the truth and fight than to try to construct something a wall around you where you ignore it but you, but it's hammering at the walls every day, and so I was like, I that was the thing. You're like me. It's like, nope, this is nope. We got to go help out. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> you know, I don't look at it as brave, and you don't look at it as a big deal. You put us on, but you know, we helped each other, and that's the one thing is the only way we get through this life is if we carry each other and let ourselves be carried when we need to. That's about it. That's all I got. All right, my brother Mike, I love you. Oh, I love you, Scott. You're the best. Oh. Um. Thank you for joining us once again here on the Cult of SMMI. If you, a family member or a friend, have gone through any situation with the Sisters Minor of Mary Immaculate, be it positive, negative, or neutral, I would like to hear from you. 
email us at strangepathwaysmail at gmail.com. Thank you once again for joining us here again this week. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you.